external data is going to do is, uh, like the external pass thing, uh, make all pass relative. What it's going to do is tell Blender each time you open this file that the textures that are used in this file are in the dball logo, wherever that's located on the user's PC, in the textures folder. That's what it's going to say. If you don't use that and you don't pack, basically Blender is just going to, like, let's say I have the t this texture saved in pictures, my pictures, textures. It, whenever someone installs it, if they install it in program files, let's say, it's going to look for that texture in my pictures and in the textures folder in my pictures. So it wouldn't find the texture and everything's going to be pink. So you want to avoid that, obviously. Um, yeah, so we have our basic grid. We have our end zone. And obviously our end zone at this point needs a material. That's one thing that I almost forgot. So we'll call this end zone. Uh, increase diffuse intensity, reduce specular intensity because we don't need that, and we want to add a texture to it. So new end zone images or movie, and you guys should uh, know this already uh, because we've done it a few times, and it's already packed from before. And I want to set this to UV, the unwrapping, and there we go. We have our end zone. So all I have to do is rotate it to make it look like a D. Actually, yeah, that's almost. Yeah, I just want to make sure it's facing the camera, just so it looks good. It's facing it enough, I think. So now when I go over to it, it should look something like this. And I could, you know, you could just tweak it, make it perfect. That'll be our end zone. And uh, now if you select our cube, our sphere, obviously our sphere has to detect that end zone. You could either make the cube or the sphere detected. It. it doesn't really matter. I prefer the sphere because it's the one colliding with the ground, uh, the cube as you saw before, kind of like goes uh, off the sphere a bit. So you want the collision to be as accurate as possible. What I'm going to add is a collision sensor, and what this is going to do is tell Blender that if the sphere collides with this thing, um, whatever property we set, uh, do that. And we're going to set it to restart for now. We're going to add. Uh, I'm going to add a second level later on. Uh, so select our end zone and just in the logic panel add a game property and call this property end zone okay so now we can go back to our sphere and in the collision we'll call this end and it says if if the sphere collides with an object with the property and we assign that object the property end zone the end zone so we're gonna put an end zone and put an end or doesn't matter and or or it doesn't really matter uh, in this case because we're only using one sensor. Um, actuator is going to be scene. So normally what you would do when you have more than one scene is set scene. Um, you can do pretty cool things with the scene actuator. Uh, you can restart, which is what we're going to have for now. So basically when you get to the end zone, uh, it's going to restart. And, th and because we don't have a second level, we're going to have it restart just to indicate that the end zone is functional. Okay, so... Uh, what you can do with scene, as you can see, is resume scene, suspend scene, remove scene, add background scene, add overlay scene, and this works for mouse, interface, stuff like that. Set camera, so you can change the camera in the level itself, in, in game. You can uh, add controls, for example, one to change camera, one, two, three to change uh, different camera views. And set scene, this actually changes the scene, so this is what you would do to transition from the menu to the game or whatever, or from the game to the winning scene or whatever or to the next level so we're just as I said we're just gonna have it set as restart and you might want to name those um, if you're organized I'm unorganized so I'm gonna stick with that um, go back to camera view control up stay in textured and zoom in test it out and now when we get our when we get to our end zone we should restart now I hope I know my maze well enough and that's actually a decent acceleration uh, acceleration area let's see if uh, you don't want to have your ball go too fast because it might actually go into the into the terrain, uh, into the, sorry, into the uh, walls here, and that's a problem, obviously. If it goes way too fast, then you might want to slow it down um, because it just doesn't collect uh, detect uh, collision well enough. And you can see that our end zone is pretty small, but if we touch it, restart. There we go. So we have a functional end zone at this point. Um, so that's a good thing. Uh, functional end zone. You touch it, you restart. Obviously, when we add a second level, uh, which I would, since you know how to make a level now, you can add the second level on your own. I don't need to teach you guys that, so uh, make as many levels as you want. 
and uh, what you want to do is I'm just going to show you how to do the transition at on this tutorial so control up so you can see the scenes here so we're going to call this level one just to keep it short and let's say we add you press plus here add full copy okay so what this is going to do is recreate level one have a second version of it so you can see it's automatically adding the 0, 0, 0.001 here so that's the new level we're going to call this level two okay so here this is our level two and uh, you can change this of course you can uh, add a new plane si uh, set it to whatever size you want and change uh, and uh, yeah just change the size and the shape or whatever uh, whatever you, you want for your next levels I'll show you how to add uh, hazards later on um, yeah so basically this is gonna be our level two and I'm just gonna show you how to transition um, this is just a quick level it's not really well done obviously just because I'm trying to save time here so now we've seen that our end zone is functional so all we're gonna have to change in our scene here we have seen how to restart and that's what we're gonna use when you touch hazards and you wanna restart the level that's what you uh, that's what you normally use so you wanna set scene here and we're gonna call we're gonna set it to level two and you can see a nice drop down menu here um, yeah so now what should happen is when we get to our end zone whoops wireframe mode there uh, when we get to our end zone it should uh, just move us to the new scene and obviously the difference between the main scene and uh, the first level and the second level is uh, that the end zone is over here for the first level and the end zone is somewhere over here for the second level right there okay so this sets us to our this makes us restart of course because uh, it's just a copy it doesn't have a level to go to so that's basically how you make different levels. Uh, when you reach the scene, you can make it go to a level. Um, okay, so that's it for the level tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I apologize if I went a bit too fast. Uh, I think I went too rapidly there. But uh, it should, you guys should be fine. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, for the next video, we are going to add a hazard to our level. And those are basically going to be... Uh, holes that you can pass by um, they're just holes that you could drop in and when you drop in there you restart okay so i hope you guys are going to be anticipating that thanks for watching and see you guys next time